All right. Genesis chapter 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he begotten Seth were eight hundred years and he begat sons and, daughter, sons and daughters. All the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. And Seth lived 105 years, and begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. And Enos lived 90 years, and begat Canaan? And Enos lived after he begat Canaan eight hundred and fifteen years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years, and he died. And Canaan lived seventy years, and begat Mahalalel. Probably. And Canaan lived after he begat that guy 840 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. And Mahalalil, aha, got it, lived eight, no, 60 and five years and begat Jared. It's a nice and normal name. And Mahalalil lived after he begat Jared 830 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalil, been better, are 890 and five years, and he died. And Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years, and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God took him and Methuselah lived an hundred eighty and seven years and begat Lamech and Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech seven hundred and eighty two years and begat sons and daughters all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred sixty and nine years and he died and Lamech lived an hundred eighty and two years and begat a son and he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground with which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah five hundred ninety and five years and begat some sons and daughters. All the days of Lamech were seven hundred seventy and seven years, and he died. And Noah was five hundred years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Hmm, triplets? Mm -hmm. Let's bring this guy back a little. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the women of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also, after that, when the sons of God came 
in unto the daughters of man, and they bear children unto them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it rep repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. No, oh, it's so sad. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And the Lord looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within, and without with pitch. I guess that's uh, pitch it in and out. All the way. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits. The breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. How is this constantly moving? I'm sorry, guys. Let's, let's bring it back. It's probably the boobs. Boobs are stupid. Day. <clears throat> but with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. I keep them alive to keep them alive with thee. These shall be they shall be male and female of the fowls after their kind and of the cattle after their kind and of every creeping thing uh, on the of the earth after his kind two of every short sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive and thou shalt make unto thee of all food that is eaten and thou shalt gather it to thee and it shall be for food for thee and for them Thus Noah did, according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. Chapter 7 And the Lord said unto Noah, Come, thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee I have seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean, by two, the male and his female, of f fowls, also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. Yet for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. 
And Noah went in, and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood, of clean beasts and of beasts that were not clean, and of fowls and of every living thing that creepeth upon the earth. There went in two and two unto Noah into the the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded Noah. And it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. That's fast. That's a very specific date. Fascinating. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Jaseph, Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his son with them, into the ark, they, and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, and every bird af after their sort. My bad. Every bird of every sort. And they went into... They went unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded. And the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth and the ark went upon the face of the waters and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail and the mountains were covered and all flesh died that moved upon the earth both of fowl and of cattle, and of beast, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land died, and of every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle, and the creeping things, and the fowl of the heaven, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. And the water waters prevailed upon the earth an hundred and fifty days. Dang. Now remember, it rained for forty days and forty nights, but the rain stayed on the earth for a hundred and forty days. Okay? Fifty days. My bad. Okay. And God remembered Noah, and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep, and the windows of heaven, were stopped, and the rain from heaven was restrained. And all the waters returned from off of the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day day of the month upon the mountain mountains of Ararat and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month in the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen and it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made and he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were drived, dried up from the earth. He also sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. 
And the dove came back to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off, so no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And yet he stayed yet another seven days, and went forth the do- and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundred and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the face of the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the dark of the ark, and look, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, the earth was dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth with his son and his wife and his son's wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whoso, whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an, an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more of every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, Seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Huh, interesting. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon the upon all that that moveth upon the earth and upon all of the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you even as the green herb have i given you all things but flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof shall you not eat and surely Your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood also be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And ye be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and every and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast on the earth that is with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast on the earth and i will establish my covenant covenant with you neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth and god said this is the token of the covenant which i have made between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations i do set my bow right there in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth and it shall come to pass when i bring a cloud over the earth and the bow shall be seen in the cloud that the bow shall be seen in still not a professional guys and i will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living thing every living creature of all flesh and the water shall more become a flesh to just flood to destroy all flesh 
And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant for which I establish between me and all flesh that is upon this earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These, well, poo. I really need to find a better thing. I keep knocking this over. Ugh. All right, where were we? And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. And Sam, Hashem and Hapheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. This is important for later on. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord of God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Sounds, sounds painful, Canaan. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. All the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. I'm going to stop it right there. Next time I'll do Genesis 10 and up. Bye, guys.